Hello, welcome to Making Photos, I'm Ian in Butterfield. If you're a photographer, you're used to creating images of other people, but what happens when you need a photograph of yourself? Well, I'm gonna go through the process that I use for creating images of me. I need some additional headshots, it's time to update my actor's profile, uh, but also I need some images to use on my YouTube uh, video thumbnails, um, just sort of fun reaction type shots. Well, I've been doing headshots for a, an actor in the studio today, and I thought this is an ideal chance for me to update my um, actor headshots. So, uh, how am I doing it? Let me just talk you through the lighting, first of all. I've got um, three lights uh, set up here. Um, the key light here is um, a large softbox. Over here is a, a rim light, a background light, and you may not be able to see it. It's just behind the, uh, the key light, but I've got a, another gridded light pointing at the background, and I've put a colored gel on there uh, to add some color to the background. Uh, Grey background paper. I like uh, working with grey because I can make it any colour I like. So that's the lighting setup. What about the camera uh, setup? Well, as you can see, I've put my R5 on uh, on tripod, and I've put my 70 to 200 uh, millimeter lens on. Uh, why am I using that? Because it's the sharpest lens I've got. Um, and it, it's a nice lens for portraiture. I find it quite flattering for me, um, particularly. I've got a trigger uh, on here, uh, so that if I press that, the lights go off. But I can't um, operate the camera and be the subject at the same time. So what have I done? I've attached, you can see here, a remote trigger. The other half of it I've got in my hand here. So I press the button and it fires the camera. That means I can fire the camera uh, from being on set. So, so far so good, nice and easy. The big orange cable uh, goes all the way through to uh, the computer screen there. So I can actually see the images as I'm shooting myself. Now, how do I get the camera in focus? Because one thing you can't do is you can't do, enable focusing remotely off a, off a simple trigger like this. Well, let me show you how I do it. Well, the first thing you need to be able to uh, set focus uh, for yourself is something to stand in for you. Now, I haven't got anybody else here in the studio, so I can't ask them to stand on set. So what I've done is I have got a spare lighting stand. Now, if I've set this right, the height should be the same as me. This feels about right on there. And what I do is I have a, a mark on the floor. In, in this case, it's actually a small tear in the paper. Uh, paper's a bit uh, tatty. But it doesn't matter for this one because I'm only going to be shooting headshots. So I don't actually need the paper on there. It's just down from a previous shoot. So I put that in the right place. So now I've got that exactly where I'm going to be standing, what I can do is I can focus the camera on that. I can frame things up knowing that that's right at the top. Uh, and because I'm in manual focus, it means once it's focused, it will stay there. It will stay on, there, on that. So the tip is use manual focus. Uh, I'm actually using back button focusing, which effectively works like manual focus. It only changes when I'm at the camera actively telling it to change and refocus. So once I've got everything framed up, I can then just move this out of the way. And so long as I stand over my mark, I can look at the camera, press the button in my hand, out of shot, and hey presto, there's an image of me. Now, just a couple of tips about posing for, uh, for portraits. Uh, I make sure I'm over my mark and nobody looks good absolutely straight onto camera. So if I stand like this and take a shot, 
you can see that doesn't look good it's not very flattering I need to angle my body off to, to one side just slightly put my weight on one leg rather than the other uh, so rear leg normally just put your weight there and that helps already <laughs> Now, face is still straight on, even though I've, I've moved my shoulders over. What I need to do is to turn my head away slightly. So almost as though I'm looking not quite 45 degrees, but 30 degrees off like that. But then flick my eyes towards the camera and you can see that's a, a much better shot. Now, head tilts. Just a little tip for you. There's what's known as feminine and masculine head tilt. A feminine head tilt is towards the camera like that which looks absolutely horrible for a bloke but a slight tilt away from the camera like that you can see that is much much more flattering uh, the only problem is I've got a microphone in shot so at this point I'm going to take the microphone off and get on creating a few images of me I've reset the studio now to, uh, to do a different set of images. I mentioned earlier that I'm, I need a set to use as thumbnails here on YouTube. And to do that, I want the plain white background and to create images that I can just cut out of me reacting and pretending um, to do something. So the way to do this and the way I've lit it is two lights onto the background, uh, and I've, uh, I've set them at one and a half stops over the, the key light. The key light is metered for F8. So those are F11, F13, uh, that sort of um, uh, region. Now, you might hear it read that uh, when you're trying to blow out a background, you should go two stops over. And that's great if you can have your subject and light them back at this sort of position because otherwise where I'm standing back here you'll get uh, spill light round. Now why can't I do it at that position? Well my studio is not big enough so I have to do one and a half stops and that works fine otherwise I get a very much washed out uh, look. Uh, the key lights remained in the same position. I've moved the reflector flag here. I've turned it round in the first set of images, it was acting as a flag with the black side just to darken down the side, stop light reflecting back. This time I want light reflecting back, so I've turned it round and that adds light into the, uh, uh, onto me so that, yes, I've still got, a, I've got the shaping because the key light's from one side, but I, I haven't got deep shadows um, because of that. As with the previous set of photos, to ensure I've got a focus lock on me, I need something to stand in my place. And again, using my trusty light stand, this time I haven't got a tear in my, uh, my paper on the floor. I've just put a, a small piece of masking tape there. So again, I can focus and frame up using this. And then uh, once I'm ready to uh, uh, create the images, I can just move that out of shot and so long as I stand on the spot, I will be in focus. Now, the next problem is because of the sort of poses I want to do, like, I don't know, I'm thinking, both my hands are going to be in shot. So whilst I could do a couple of shots with the, with the trigger in my hand, and I have done, but you can see the sort of the problem with that. You, it's visible in the shot. So how am I going to get around it? Well, the way I'm going to get around it is, fortunately, my camera, the R5, the Canon R5, has an intervalometer on it. And uh, some cameras do, some cameras don't. I also have an external intervalometer. And what an intervalometer does is you set a, a number of shots that you want to take, or indefinitely, and how often you want the camera to take the shot. So what I've set up is five seconds, and just keep going. So I can start that off as the camera's going off. I've got five seconds between pose and and, and, and all those sorts of, of things to create the expressions that I'm looking for. And, and that work, works quite well uh, for this. 
So that's the way I'm going to do it. So if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm going to take the microphone off and uh, I'll get on with those shots. <laughs> as I was doing those shots there were a couple of interesting images the true profile and straight onto camera now what are those for well if you want to find out take a look at the video here and I'll show you how it's done to create a caricature portrait so until next time thanks for watching keep making great photos and I'll see you in the next video.